Thank you for agreeing to, to this interview with the Florentine. We're very pleased to be able to, to talk to you today. And um, on our behalf, congratulations on, on this new appointment as the 44th Consul General of, of the United States in Florence. And this is a position that, that goes way back in time now. I mean, the first US Consul General uh, Consular General took up office here in Florence in 1819, I mm, think it was. That's right. I'm just wondering whether this story, this history and heritage related to this position, does it have an impact on your approach to the consulship in any way? Absolutely. It's, it's a tremendous responsibility, uh, actually. You know, it's, it's a wonderful place to, to be assigned and it's a dream come true to have the chance to, to live in Florence and, and to work here, obviously. Uh, but it's a heavy responsibility because of that heritage. If you look at the list, uh, when you come in the building, there's a list of, of all of the, the consuls and representatives and consuls general that have been here for the last 200 years or 198 years. And you think about these different periods. The, the first person arrived, it was still the Gran Ducato. Uh, this, of course, Florence was the capital for five years, so we had our embassy here then. Um, and then through all the periods of our shared history. So you think about what these predecessors have done over the years through the war, through the period of the flood and afterwards, and you know, they've really built a foundation uh, upon which you know, I wanna continue their work and the, the deep ties with uh, Tuscany and, and America that are so deep and, and broad here, you know, I really feel the responsibility to continue to nurture those and, and, and make them grow even more. And of course, one of the previous consul generals here in Florence is actually your wife. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, sure yep, she's right there on the list, <laughs> yes. I mean, does she give you any advice because she's been in that position, or, or does this feel like a homecoming in some sort of way for, for you? A bit of both, yeah. I mean, she's, uh, she's got some uh, advice. She's been very helpful to me, of course, in giving me some ideas of, of how to, to uh, move here. Um, but it, it does feel like a homecoming. You know, this is the first time I've had a, a diplomatic assignment in a place where I've lived before, if not been assigned before. And so it's, it's really helpful to me to at least have some sense of what's important to Tuscans, to Alto Emilia Romagna and San Marino is, is in our district. Um, you know, what's important to them. You know, I, I have a love already for the, the culture and the history here. I have my favorite place for Bistecca Fiorentina. Oh, I, I worry about the Vendemia, you know, the important things in life. So <laughs> it gives me a bit of a, a head start in terms of feeling comfortable. Um, and so I don't have to go up that, that cultural learning curve that's so common uh, in a diplomatic, new diplomatic assignment. So I feel like I can get right to work. That's wonderful, man. I mean, wonderful for everyone here at the consulate, well, I suppose. You know, I don't know you, about you've got that. a running start. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. I mean, you're talking about your uh, your career to date, and right. um, I mean, you've you've served overseas, and I've read Indonesia, and right. Russia, and in Burma, as well as in the U.S. consulate in up in Milan. In Milan, right? And uh, I'm just wondering, how do the challenges differ? from place to place and from assignment to assignment? Yeah, no, it's an excellent question. It's, it's the, the challenge and also the, the great pleasure of, of a diplomatic career because you're always doing something different. You're always in a, in a new country. Uh, Milan and Florence are in the same country, but you know many would argue that they're completely different, have nothing in common with each other. Um, so obviously the challenges and opportunities vary. Level of development of the country, the status of our uh, bilateral relationship um, with Italy. You know, we're a longtime friend and, and ally, so it's different than being in, in Burma uh, 10, 15 years ago when there was a military regime. Um, so the challenges and opportunities vary, but certain things remain the same that I've found from assignment to assignment. Uh, and you know, by and large, it's that level of people to people ties that there, no matter what the official relationship is or the, the policy differences might be, there remains this strong desire at that level to keep the connections alive and, and keep the relationship alive. Um, you know, I've also noticed that no matter where we are, and again, no matter what the official relationship is, there remains a, a, a fascination and interest in the United States. You know, no matter where you are, uh, people are curious about our values. They're curious about life in the United States. 
They want to continue to, to travel and, and visit the United States, regardless of official uh, policy or official relations. And so that, that always gives us something that we can work with as diplomats, no matter, no matter where we are. Um, and you know, I, I frankly feel, you know, when I travel around the world as a diplomat, you know, and I'm as critical as any U.S. citizen and voter, but um, you know, I really am proud to represent the United States abroad in, in all of these different countries. Um, you know, and, and, I, and I'm proud to see that the, the continued interest um, in the United States and what we stand for. And so that, that energizes me and keeps me going throughout my career, no matter where I am. On a sad note, we're talking about students and study abroad. Um, um, I recently spoke with, with Mayor Dario Nadella about um, what the Comune is doing to promote a culture of safety and cultural integration among American students in Florence following the recent rape accusations of two American students by on-duty Carabinieri officers. Um, could you tell us a little bit about what the US consulate in Florence is, is doing on this particular front? and? Um, and, and the consulate's involvement in the case at all? There's absolutely no greater priority for the consulate. There never has been and, and never will be a greater priority than safety and security of, of American citizens in the district. And that goes for tourists, for students, for residents, for our American investors here, for our American military that are stationed out in Camp Darby. It's, it's why we're here. And we dedicate ourselves to that in many ways, uh, all year round, not just when there's some kind of, of crisis. Um, more specifically with students, we go and visit with them as a matter of course uh, at the beginning of the different semesters uh, and, and talk to them about, generally about safety and security issues. Uh, we've always had wonderful support from the various comuni because the students aren't just in Florence, they're all over, um, and law enforcement authorities. Um, and that cooperation, uh, I have no doubt, will continue uh, to flourish into the future. Um, so I think that, that uh, you know, Florence and Tuscany, Emilia Romagna, where our students are, uh, these are extremely safe places, so we start from a very high level. There's always more that can be done to collaborate, um, and so I'm sure we'll always find creative ways and, and tangible ways to, to continue to work together. Uh, but one thing I, I'd like to focus on, you know, moving forward is, you know, the, this question of, of integration and, and the students and other elements of the American community here. Um, not just being more involved in the local community, but I think you know that they are already uh, extraordinarily involved with the community um, in all sorts of different ways. Uh, college students that are going and teaching English in high schools or helping to, to clean graffiti off of buildings, um, you know, American uh, investors here that are, are taking time all, to giving their employees time off every year to go and do projects with Caritas or, or others, uh, other civil, Italian civil society organizations. So what I'd like to, to see is frankly those existing, while we continue to work to do more, because there's always room to do more, that these existing community service projects uh, be better recognized and highlighted. And that's a task for us to, to work on, along with you in, in the media. <laughs> but um, certainly that, that's at the top of our list uh, in terms of, of priorities in, in working with, with students and other elements of the American community uh, to improve their experience here in Italy. Um, I couldn't agree more. I mean, it's something that we we see at the Florentine is we have a lot of uh, American study abroad students who come and do internship programs with us, and I've always been very impressed by, by the level of their skills, commitment, and, and enterprise when they come into our office. So, I mean, that's something as well, you know, that that maybe you know we can collaborate on via the Comune is is getting the word out there and involving these students in various programs and initiatives and and internship programs, these sort of things that actually bring a real life experience aspect to their study abroad. I, I think well. that's wonderful. And yeah. thanks to the Florentine for offering those opportunities. We'd love to do more with you and, and with anyone else who, who's interested uh, in working with, again, students, but not only. You know, we have 50,000 plus American residents here, major corporations and smaller US companies. You know, I think one of the, the real strengths of American culture, especially amongst young people, is this spirit of volunteerism. 
and it's it's something that they they bring to the table. And you know, I always encourage uh, when I'm meeting with Italian authorities or, or others, just regular Italians, encourage them to think of Americans here uh, not just as visitors or as a source of of revenue for their business, but as members of this of the community, as uh, members of the, the the fabric of society, neighbors and friends and employers, employees, clients, and treat them as they would they're Italian members of the, the community and try to get from the Americans who are here something extra that they bring, something particular that they bring. And I, I think that spirit of volunteerism is really something uh, that Americans do excel at and that, uh, that the members of the American community can certainly offer here. Um. Moving on to trade. Yes, um, an interesting topic. An interesting topic. Um, you recently commented, well, I hope you did, it was stated in the media, you <laughs> never know. Uh, you recently commented that while Tuscan export exports to the US remain strong, uh, you would like to see more importation of US products to Tuscany, to Italy. How can this trading be encouraged? And I'm also wondering how this Select USA program works right. and what that consists of. Yeah, th thanks for asking about this because um, my background is, is economics, so I'm always really keen to, to talk about these issues in particular. Um, so the, you know, one of our priorities for a long time in every country in the world has been to promote U.S. exports. It's one of the fundamental functions of an embassy abroad is to work with American companies who are selling and with local companies who want to buy. So. There's a, quite a lot that we do just as a matter of course. Uh, the Foreign Commercial Service, which is located in our embassy, has a, a large office, the U.S. Department of Commerce, and they're the lead on this nationwide. Uh, some of the things that they do and that the consulates, including uh, our consulates, support, things like trade shows. You know, there are a number of very large trade shows in Bologna in particular, but elsewhere, where um, they'll bring delegations of American exporters and try to link them up with, with Italian buyers. Uh, so that's, that's one way. Uh, we'll try to bring delegations of, of Italian distributors or companies here that are interested in high quality or high tech US products where we have a comparative advantage. Bring them to the states to, again, see what the US uh, uh, sellers have on offer and try to, to broker some of those deals. So these are things that we've been doing for a long time and we're gonna really redouble efforts on that. In terms of Select USA, th this is an initiative that uh, also our, our friends at the Commerce Department are, are heading up, but that we're going to be increasingly active on here in Florence. And basically the way it works is that we, we try to find uh, new, uh, Italian companies that haven't yet invested in the U.S. market but might be interested to do so. We also talk to Italian companies that have successfully invested in the U.S. and we try to encourage them uh, to look for additional opportunities uh, in the U.S. It's a little bit complicated because we have no federal investment policy. Every state in the United States is responsible for promoting or encouraging investment in their own way. So what we can do though is um, help in those initial meetings to give some basic information and then to link up uh, the potential investors here with state uh, authorities in the United States uh, in order to make the deals. And so we'll do some meetings here initially through um, the American Chamber of Commerce here in, in Florence work with the Confindustria elsewhere, and try to get some interest going. There'll be some Select USA events early next year to give some more detailed information. And then every year in June, there's a big uh, meeting in Washington where we bring investors, potential investors in from all over the world to meet with representatives of the various states so that they can really get down to, to business and, and figure out the details of the investment. But that really is, as, as we've seen in, in many of the president's statements, this is one of the, the highest priorities of this administration, which is to encourage more inward investment into the United States. So we're, we're in a great op, uh, position to do that because there's such a strong bilateral relationship between Tuscany and Emilia Romagna in particular and the United States. Our business people and the business people here know each other really well, they know the territory well, so it's just a question for us to facilitate as best we can. 
So it's, it's exciting, and we're looking forward to doing more on that. So apart from trade, what other goals can, can we expect from your time as, as, con, as Consul General? It's hard to choose, you know? <laughs> I mean, uh, there, there's so much we could do. As I said at the beginning, you know, two, 198 years of, of uh, incredible work by my predecessors has left uh, an amazing menu of, of opportunities. But, you know, I, I think w what's important for us to, to do here is, is uh, to work on three things in particular. Um, and two of them we've discussed already. Uh, you know, one of course is, and always as I mentioned, is our top priority. Find ways to do more to get Americans of all stripes here better integrated, feeling more secure and safe um, in this, in this uh, community and in this region, and Emilio Romagna as well, and San Marino. You know, 10% of San Marinese are, are dual American citizens. Oh really? Yeah. I didn't know that, yeah. that's interesting. So, we have a lot of a lot of interests there, and a big community uh, in San Marino. So, uh, so we do a lot of work there. Um, you know, and, and sort of uh, attached to that is this uh, campaign, as we discussed, to get Americans more involved in community service and highlight better what's already going on. The second uh, priority, as I mentioned, is redoubling our existing efforts to get more Emilia Romagna, Tuscan, San Marinese companies to invest in the US. And we'll be doing, as I mentioned, a number of outreach uh, programs in the next few months here. Um, and then the third is kind of a, a funner long-term, uh, well, it's all fun, but uh, <laughs> a, a, a sort of longer-term uh, objective, which is to really take stock of what we've done together over the last 198 years. Um, you know, we, we want to work with archives, we want to work with universities, with the various cities around uh, the region, the consular district, and take stock of what we've done together so that we can put together a program during 2019 to celebrate our 200 years together. So stay tuned for that. Um, <laughs> we don't have the, the details all ironed out yet, but there, there's so much out there. Um, again, ra raising, uh, ranging back to the period when the US was a very new Republic, and uh, this was the Grand Ducato. So um, that's those are the three things, along with everything else we're doing. But those are the three major priorities for me, at least, that I want to spend a lot of time on. And if I could make a pitch too, so we we've just started a Twitter feed, and we're trying to expand our Facebook presence. So a lot of what we're talking about, and that we're going to be wanting to to uh, talk to people about we're going to be doing through our, our social media platform. So it's, it's at sign USCG Florence. So I hope all of your viewers and readers will come check us out. And on a serious note, it, it is now the way we, we try to stay in touch with our American community uh, when we have good news or, or less good news to communicate. So we're, we have our traditional methods as well, email, but we are encouraging um, Americans when they come here to, to make sure they follow us, especially on Twitter, so that uh, we can get any emergency messages out to them as, as quickly as possible. Wonderful. Um, before we started this interview, we were having a nice little chat about right. like, where we like to go to eat and I things know. like that. So I have a few Florence quick quiet questions sure. we like to ask people. Of course. Um, Favorite place for an aperitivo in Florence? Well, Do you have you know, one? Th these days I'm a bit lazy, but um, there's so many things around in this neighborhood now. Um, and so I, I've been going to Bistro Santa Rosa quite a bit, which is just over the way. As it gets colder, maybe uh, a little less, but the, the, this, the area is spectacular. The drinks are great, and, and I love the, the topless menu there. So it's a great spot. That's good. And no, no endorsement, you know, no, no paid endorsement no, no, here. No. <laughs> Just one man's opinion. One man's opinion. Um, well, I guess Santa Rosa can, can uh, inspire or make you happy, but do you have another place that inspires <laughs> yeah. or makes you happy? That's right. Uh, you know, it's, it's kind of a strange choice, but this is start, starting from when I used to come down here before to see my wife, I always loved the, the walk on the Costa San Giorgio up to Porta San Giorgio. Uh, it's just the place where you really feel like you could be in Florence three, four, five hundred years ago. And when you get to the Porta and you look out and you're next to Belvedere and the, the walls are on your left, you really can feel like you're in uh, Florence of a different time. So that, that really makes me feel excited to be here when, I, when I'm there. 
So that, that's the spot that I would say for me is, is, makes me feel the most excited to be in Florence. That's a great answer. Also with you know, all of the contemporary art exhibitions that they're holding up at Forte Forto Belvedere, it's a great place yeah. to be. Yeah, and that's, you know, that's, you talk about sort of what's changed since I was down here before. I mean, the, the number of new things going on around town uh, is, is remarkable. You know, a lot's the same and you know, uh, that's great because you know, we like a little bit of stability, but there's so much new and exciting going on as well, so. Absolutely. Biggest difference between Italians and Americans? Uh, so, I pre being a diplomat, I preface that by <laughs> saying, of all the places that I've been, uh, Italy is where we have the most in common. There's no question about it. Um, I think it's because of our, our shared history. So many Italians have come to the United States and come back. So many Americans over the last 150 years have come here. Um, it's, you know, once they decide to travel out of the US, they want to come to Italy. So we have so much in common, our values, our history. Um, but one thing I've noticed that we do maybe have a little bit different, uh, and this is not just Italy, is the, a sense of, a difference in a, a sense of time. Um, and, or, you know, I think it's an historical perspective, but, uh, you know, Americans are very much in the moment and, you know, court, reporting quarterly results from companies, you know, looking at, at what we can achieve right away, you know, and let's not spend time to lay the groundwork, let's just get in there and fix this problem. Whereas I think the Italians, and, and not only, have a different perspective, probably because they've been working on things for three, four, five, six hundred years. Um, so that uh, sense of perspective uh, is, is, is a little bit different. So, and it's, you know, it's positive and negative, right? So, yeah, yeah. you know, the, the American desire to jump in there and fix the problem, you know, is often a, a positive, sometimes a negative. The Italian idea to, you know, take some time and let's see how it evolves and, you know, or, you know, we can't fix this because it's, you know, you know, sometimes that's good and sometimes it's, it's, it's less, you know, positive, but that, that's, the, that's the main difference I've noticed over time. That's a fantastic answer. I, mean, I find as well, it's, kind of, it's a good marriage actually, the two Italian and American mentality, they actually work well together. I in agree, many ways, I agree, they? very complimentary. Yeah. Uh, best day trip in Tuscany? Uh, I mean, another one that's like, you, you could spend all day listing the best day trips. So, um, but my favorite ones lately have been, uh, I've loved to, uh, to take a day treks up to, um, to uh, Monte Sereno and uh, Madonna del Sasso up uh, from Olmo area. Wonderful hikes. If, if you haven't, actually, I shouldn't advertise it because it's so nice and quiet now, but uh, it's a spectacular thing to do on a beautiful day. And uh, the end result is so lovely when you get up to the, to the convento or the, the, the church, just, just beautiful, so. Favorite Florentine, past or present? Well, I have to say, uh, historically, Amerigo Vespucci, right? I mean, he, he's what we have. I mean, if, if we think about you know, our 200 years here, uh, we have to go back even further to, uh, to give thanks to Amerigo Vespucci for putting us on the map. <laughs> That's very you good. Like that um, but, uh, and also because he's right here with us in, in uh, Borgo Nisanti, so uh, he's very close by. M modern uh, Florentine, you know, Salvatore Ferragamo has such a great Italo-American story. And, you know, again, thinking about what we have in common, you know, the, those that, that left here and went to the States and then brought back the best of the U.S., to, to plant here and use the best of Italy and the best of the US together. It's, you know, it's like out of a book, that type of story. So, so I love that. I love those type of stories when we uncover them. Um, strangest thing you've seen in the city? Uh, so it's not strange, but the most remarkable, uh, remarkable thing I've seen, and this was last time, is the, uh, the uh, uh, Scopio del Carro because that, that is really something to see in a modern city, the procession, which leaves obviously just from up the street here uh, and goes through and then uh, to have that incredible uh, explosion and all the, the activity and then the procession back, just, just spectacular, yeah. just spectacular. So I'm looking forward to doing that <laughs> next, uh, next Easter. Wonderful. 
Thank you very much for, you. for your time and for your wonderful answers to, uh, to our uh, little questions. Well, <laughs> this is a city that, you know, to me means a lot. And uh, I've had so many great experiences here already and can't wait for three more years of, of great experiences. Three months have already flown by, so I'm already getting a little anxious and that I'll be able to do everything I want to do. But um, I appreciate your, your coming by, and, and I hope it's the beginning of a, a fruitful relationship together over the next three years. Absolutely. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much for Thank your time. You.